Hi friends, welcome back to another episode on practical penmanship. In this week's episode, we're responding to a request by, dang it, I can't even remember your name. Kelly Franca, got it. Kelly Franca, we're responding to a request Kelly Franca had and she said, help me, I'm also a lefty, can't hold pen without pain or with no pain. Can't hold the pen with no pain. So, first things first. So right out of the gate, first thing you gotta know about gripping a pen is that there's more to it and more to a comfortable grip than just how you hold the pen. There are a bunch of things that are important to consider. You're gonna have to consider your posture, your arm placement, paper placement, all of these things are really important when it comes to finding the right grip for you. And it is most likely the case that if you're someone who wants to improve their penmanship seriously, you're going to have to change things about the way you hold the pen. And for a lot of people, this is not an easy thing to do. I had to change my own grip when I wanted to really make strides in my own penmanship and that in and of itself took months to do. It takes a lot of conscious effort to actually change the way you write. And it's not easy, I'm not gonna say that it's easy, but it's something that is definitely worth your while if you're someone who wants to write, handwrite for long periods of time and be comfortable throughout that whole experience. So today I'm mainly sharing with you the positions that I have found to be the most comfortable both right-handed and left-handed because as the name states, Diane Dual Pen writes with two hands and so should you, just saying. If you wanna learn more about why I write with both hands, make sure to check out the video on ambidexterity. So we, we really need to talk about feet placement and posture. So many people and including myself, this is something that I still do to this day and I still have to consciously remind myself, don't do that, stop crossing your legs. We should be seated with our feet flat on the floor. You don't want you to cross your feet, you don't want to pull them under your chair, you don't want to do some weird stuff to the side or to the opposite side, whatever. You want your feet flat on the floor. Next is posture. You definitely want your spine to be erect in your chair. You don't want to be leaned all the way back into your chair, but you definitely want to have your tailbone touching the back of your chair if your chair has a back. If your chair doesn't have a back, you don't have to worry about it so much, but you want your spine to be erect. Now this will play into the proximity to the table. So you don't want to be too close to the table where your belly is touching it, but you don't want to be too far away either. You want to be just that right distance so that your arms can rest down on the table comfortably. Now finding the right position for your arms can be a little bit tricky. So there's this method I had found in the Palmer method for business handwriting where he shares this technique of lifting your arms up and dropping them down. And as you drop them down, what happens is you're finding the natural position for your shoulder to rest. You wanna ensure going into this that you've gone through the first few steps. So your feet are flat on the floor, your spine is erect, you have this strong posture, you're in a good proximity to the table, not too close, not too far, and then you're gonna to wanna to raise your arms out in front of the table and drop them down. Just let them drop naturally. Notice, where do they fall? Does it feel comfortable? If it doesn't feel comfortable, lift them up a little higher, drop them again. Lift them up a little bit more, drop them again. And in that way, you can find the position that feels most natural for both your shoulder to rest, rolled back and down, and also for your forearm to rest with the hand pronated. So you don't want your, your hand to be resting on the side of your palms while you're handwriting. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Your, the angle of your body to the table varies depending on what kind of table you're using. So for example, if you have a long forward table and a good amount of space in front of you on the table, you can use a forward writing position. So you don't have to angle your body so much. You can angle it a little bit if that's what makes you feel comfortable, but you don't need to give yourself a dramatic angle 
to the table. You can be pretty much straightforward. And the, the paper in that position is going to be angled. Now you do need about at least 25 inches in front of you on the table in order to make this front writing position work. If you don't have that much space, you're just gonna have to angle your body a little bit and adjust with whatever you have in front of you. Now, if you're in college and you're a college student and you're taking notes in one of those auditoriums and you have nothing but that little side table that slides up and into place, this, is, this style of writing will work perfectly fine for you. I did it for the last year of college when I had first learned about whole arm writing and muscular movement. This is the style of writing I use to take notes in class. And it's really practical because you can write really quickly this way. Your notes can come out really consistent when you write this way. And so it's definitely feasible if you were a college student and you only have that small table. All you have to do, say if you want to practice at home on a larger table, just turn your whole body to the side. All you need to do is put your forearm on the table and that gives you all the space you need in order to use this style of writing. So arm placement's really important. Let's talk a little bit more about arm placement. Now your arms should be positioned so that the writing arm is in line with the slant of your paper and your opposite hand should be resting on the top of the paper holding it for you. Now your left hand or your right hand if you're left-handed is assistant to the writing hand. It is what's going to move your paper across the writing zone. So arm placement is really important because once you find the arm placement that is comfortable for you you don't want to change your arm placement. Your arm should stay exactly where it is within that limited writing zone. So let's look a little bit more closely at the grip on the pen. Now I've seen a whole range of weird grips in my day. My sister has the strangest grip I've ever seen in my life. And so I know that there are a huge variety of grips out there. And I myself started with a grip that wasn't ideal for long periods of time handwriting. So what did I have to do? I had to change my style of holding the pen. And this is by far one of the hardest things for people to do. What happens is you have this pathway in your brain that becomes so strongly adapted to doing what it does that to steer away from it is almost near impossible. But I have good news for you because you are the one who is in charge of your body. So let's look a little bit more closely at how I recommend you hold the pen and how I've been recommended to hold the pen. Now the only thing I have ever found from any sort of professional who works in the realm of handwriting is a tripod grip. Everyone recommends a tripod grip. If you learn to hold the pen using the tripod grip, you're actually going to improve your writing experience in the long run. Now there are a few little things that will actually help you if you're having a hard time with the tripod grip. So I'm going to go ahead and show you those here. The tripod grip is super simple and it's really important not to squeeze the pen when you're handwriting. We're all strong enough to hold the pen. It ain't going anywhere. You don't need to squeeze it. All you have to do is put your index finger and your thumb about a quarter inch away from one another as if you're about to pinch something. And the pen actually just rests on top of that point there. So as if you're about to pinch something and then you just put the pen right there on top and it just sits there. And your index finger will actually sit on top of that point there. Now when you're actually handwriting, you wanna rotate your hand so that the knuckles are pointed upward. This is going to be the most comfortable position when using muscular movement because it allows for your forearm to actually uh, make better contact with the table, it allows for your forearm muscle to make better contact with the table. Now when it comes to muscular movement, the movement generally comes from the shoulder. So your forearm is going to rest on the table Remember, by pronating your hand and turning the knuckles upward, you allow for the forearm to make better contact with the table. Now your range of motion when it comes to muscular movement is limited by the elasticity of your skin. So when you pronate your hand, you should feel your arm muscle make solid contact with the table. And it's right under the elbow. So between the elbow and the mid forearm, you're going to see that the muscle of your forearm makes pretty solid contact with the table. And if you make little circles, you'll see that the tugging of your skin will limit your range of motion. And that's perfect. 
So before you even start writing at all, don't even uncap your pen or put ink in your pen, don't do any of that. First, find the most comfortable position. So you want your arm to rest on the table, hand pronated, knuckles up, and you want to find that range of motion. You wanna make sure that the movement is coming from your shoulder, it's coming from your lats, it's coming from your tricep. You can feel the muscles activate in those regions of your body. It does not come from your fingers, it does not come from your wrist. You wanna primarily find the movement and that range of motion in the up and the larger muscles of the arm and back. And this is gonna allow you to write for longer periods of time without experiencing fatigue as quickly. And that's really important if you wanna sit down for a pretty significant amount of time and enjoy your experience handwriting. Now, when you actually start handwriting, it's perfectly fine if the pinky and index, or sorry, not the index finger, the ring finger are resting and gliding along the paper as well. So now that we've gone through all of that, let's ink this bad boy up. Once you're ready to actually handwrite and see what you can produce, see if that movement you've been feeling and envisioning is actually going to manifest in the way it should look on the paper. And please be patient with yourselves because muscular movement is not an easy transition for most. So the first exercise that I practice when it comes to developing my muscular movement is the underturn compact oval, which is a counterclockwise rotation. The next drill that we do is the overturn, which is a clockwise rotation for the compact oval. For me, this rotation was a little bit more difficult because for whatever reason, I practiced the underturn for way longer. The next one is the push-pull drill. This is gonna help you find a consistent slant in your downstrokes by really gaining the muscle memory for that movement you can keep a really consistent slant in your handwriting without even having to think about it the next drill that you can practice that's really beneficial is this figure eight drill and what i like to do is i like to create a compact oval to fit my figure eight within and that gives me a boundary to work within so that i'm all working within more or less the same size the other drill i like to do is this uh, this horizontal line drill. This is a different pivot on your elbow. So this one in combination with the push pull drill can be used to warm up to the compact oval drill, which is a full rotation where you're pivoting your elbow, but you're also pushing and pulling your shoulder. I find that the compact oval actually comes really naturally though, because it follows the socket rotation of the shoulder. The next drill that I like to do is a spiral drill. So tapering down the size of your oval will make this style of handwriting more practical because when you're doing these drills, you typically want to do them larger than you actually handwrite, but we want to begin to scale things down so that when we get to the classroom or we get to work or we get to a practical setting where we need to use this handwriting style, we don't write ginormous. We write at a standard regular size so you can fit on college ruled paper or even smaller if you like. The next one, which is kind of an extension of the spiraling drill, is the tapering compact oval drill. So what I do is I pretty much draw a diagonal line, kind of making it look like this right angle triangle. And what I do is I fit the compact oval starting at full size, and then I taper down as I get to the end of this right angle triangle. And then what I do is I just slide the paper around and then I'll do the opposite rotation. So if you did an underturn first, you will do the overturn next and just fill in that opposite gap with another compact oval that decreases in size to the point. So I did my best to show you everything with both hands. Obviously I'm a right-handed individual, so my left hand isn't going to match up to the quality that my right hand can produce. I've been writing with the left hand for over six years now and there's still so much progress to be made. So I like to compare my left-handed writing to an 11 year old. Make sure to check out some of the other videos in the Practical Penmanship series. I hope you guys have found this helpful and I hope you find those other vi videos helpful. 
I know a lot of the information in here has been relayed in some of those other videos, but I was looking back through some of my old videos and I was having a hard time going through them because they're just so long and the information isn't very concise. So if you want to see me rant for a long period of time, make sure to check out those really old videos where I give you tons of writing samples because you're literally just looking at me right for sometimes up to 20 minutes. And I'm talking over that and explaining all these random things related to handwriting. They're not that random actually. It's all pretty much related to what I'm doing in the video. But if you're interested in that, make sure to check it out. I have some other videos that I've made more recently on other aspects of handwriting like you should write outside or the zen of handwriting and how to find it. but I hope you guys have found this useful I hope that uh, Kelly was it Kelly yes Kelly Frank I got it right yes got it right Kelly I hope that this helps you I hope that you managed to find a grip that is comfortable for you and I hope that the tripod grip is the one that you choose to pursue because Ultimately, it's the best one. So if anybody else has any requests in regards to handwriting or any questions, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. I'm more than happy to fulfill any sort of requests or answer any questions. And thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate your time, and I really appreciate all the encouragement that you guys have been giving me thus far. On a side note, I just recently reached 200 subscribers and knowing my luck by the time I posted this video, I'm gonna have somebody unsubscribe or something. But I just wanted to say thank you guys who have come and joined the channel and become part of the discussion in any way because it really means a lot to me and I make this content in the hopes of helping you out in your own experience. Handwriting for me has been a really valuable tool in my life it honestly saved my life in so many different ways and I only want to share that with you guys so that you can also experience some of the benefit that I gained from handwriting.